This video is brought to you by Coding Dojo. Hello? They're out? Right, they're out. Uh, did I get one? I get, I get one. I mean, I got one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, you know what? I have to go. Bye. This is not good. So loud. There has to be another way. A few moments later. Okay, it's blank. I think this is three, two, one. This here's the new M2 Pro. Change the wallpaper. This here's the new M2 Pro. Apple is a joke. Please invite me to your event. Do you guys even remember when the MacBook Air came out? It was an absolute masterpiece for its time. I mean, it legit fit in an envelope. Fast forward a few years later and we got the M1 MacBook Air. An incredible laptop, extremely hard to beat in my opinion. Fast forward to last year and we got the M2 MacBook Air. And all of this gets me thinking, have we really progressed? Like at the time, did the original MacBook Air have a bigger impact on society compared to the impact this new gen had on us? Maybe, maybe not. One thing I can say though is that personally, I think the MacBook Air M2 is one of the best laptops out there, sort of. You see, I've been spending so much time with this particular laptop. It's like the laptop that stays at home for the most part. I do all my admin work on it, answer emails, watch Netflix. And so my MacBook Pro can get lonely at times, but that's my powerhouse right there. That laptop is the one that I use for content creation and a lot more when this is not around. But for the past six months, the air sort of took over some of the time I used to dedicate to my MacBook Pro. And I slowly started realizing that maybe this isn't that much more worth it compared to the M1 Air. From my point of view, I feel like the jump from the original Air to Apple having their own silicon in this chassis was bigger. Bigger because the power efficiency they introduced into the slim chassis is unbeatable. Then the jump from the M1 Air to the M2 Air came along. Yes, more power, new colors, a new design, more screen real estate, and more battery life, but I like recommending people to get an M1 Air refurbished instead. Don't get me wrong, my experience with this has been nothing but amazing. However, the performance in this is a bit of a miss in my opinion. And I'm mainly talking from experience, someone that genuinely tends to use this day in and day out. Single core chips are known to excel at single core tasks like web browsing. So if you are maybe say an undergrad student doing things like writing essays and have an upwards of 10 to 20 Chrome tabs open with long format PDFs and whatnot, this is way more than enough for it. Heck, on my end, when it comes to web development, whether I'm coding in JavaScript, Python, and whatnot, the M2 Air delivers. But when it comes to being efficient as a machine, the M2 draws more power to be able to deliver that 10 to 15% power increase over the M1 chip. Look, you can try this for yourself. Just open up Cinebench, run AC Top with Python, and look at the power drawn. When you start doing the math, considering one laptop has a 49.9 watt hour lithium polymer battery and the other one has a 52.6 watt hour battery with the work i do on it i've realized that the battery life the m2 delivers is so freaking similar to the m1 air the difference is negligible and the same can be said about the speed regarding the single nan chip on the m2 air not on paper though but to further explain myself, is this something that will be noticeable to most true MacBook Air users? I cannot begin to express how for the past six months, this has not changed my life at all on this laptop. I mean, it's something that I genuinely haven't even noticed. It's supposed to make a huge difference once the eight gigabytes of RAM is used up and apps start running off the SSD. But because I don't use it for crazy workflows, I don't notice my RAM lacking all that much. Yes, I think spending that extra 250 bucks for 16 gigabytes of RAM can be worth it for a lot of you. Maybe not most of you, but a lot of you. However, 
as a whole, the decrease in performance because of the single NAND chip is there on paper. This is where as a YouTuber, I would come in and say, hey, just get the 512 gigabyte SSD option. You'll get two NAND chips and just call it a day. All of a sudden you find yourself $500 away or $400 US from the brand new M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, a laptop with a lot more power and a way better ROI if power is what you need. And so one of my boys just texted me. He's like, yo, I got a huge price drop all due to the new releases, of course. And so the M1 Pro saw a discount of $400 Canadian on the Apple refurbished website and so for the same price of the macbook air m2 with 512 gigabytes of ssd and 16 gigabytes of ram you can get an m1 pro macbook pro huh again the tasks that the m2 architecture was built for doesn't suffer from a good productivity workflow it suffers from doing photoshop work reading heavy codec files to film, intensive mobile development. Again, this isn't a laptop for that in my opinion, which is why I don't have those installed. Remember, the M2 chip is very much based off the M1 chip. It's a chip that's per se tuned, overclocked, and the architecture was slightly enlarged to include more memory bandwidth along some other things. If you are looking to do things a step above the typical MacBook Air use, my recommendation is to avoid upgrading this chassis and probably look into the latest MacBook Pro 14 inch instead. The base model comes already fully spec'd out. I will also say that even though the thermals are different on this machine compared to the M1, performance degradation hasn't really been a thing for me. Yes, we know this tends to run hotter because of the power being drawn, but I don't think long term this should be a concern. We are still talking about ARM here, an architecture that can output power and still deliver great temperatures. Like, does it get hot during coding, for example? Yes and no. It depends what you are doing. My answer is no because I don't find myself running crazy workflows like I just have a browser open, my IDE, Spotify, Postman, Docker, and whatnot. Heck, even with an intense Excel workflow, everything is so smooth and things don't get hot. And don't worry, Excel is not a memory hungry application, but once you start diving into heavier apps like maybe Flutter and learning iOS development, things do get laggy, and since Xcode is really resource intensive, you will occasionally see the memory pressure go yellow to red with two gigabyte swap within your eight gigabyte model. This is where the cons of that one NAND chip configuration typically kicks in. The RAM gets hungry and just borrows memory and speeds from the SSD. So if you're a computer science student wanting to try everything, a software engineer, a graphic designer, this is a laptop that's a 50-50 for me. Look, I use Photoshop and Lightroom quite a bit and that alone together uses about five, six, eight gigabytes of RAM in my workflow. Reasons as to why I did not bring this to Vegas with me. For 80% of people, eight gigabytes of RAM is enough, but 16 gigabytes of RAM for these crazy workflows is already a must. And then add 512 gigabytes when it comes to the SSD to ensure fast speeds when RAM starts to borrow from memory. And so again, we slowly start getting into the new M2 MacBook Pro territory. If you are multitasking in multiple professional apps and doing extremely memory intensive tasks, you need a pro model machine. And that's a statement I've solidified with this machine over the course of the last six months. On the other hand, for most web developers, business technology management students, any business student really, HR, nurses, some engineering careers, and so on, the M2 MacBook Air is great, but not that much worth it compared to the M1 Air. What's very much worth it in my opinion is that if you are thinking of doing a career change, coding might be one that might interest you. The best way of doing so in my opinion is by doing a bootcamp. It saves you money, time, and some headaches. And Coding Dojo is actually there to help you start your new career in tech in a matter of weeks. A couple of months ago, I attended their online coding bootcamp where they gave me a schedule for the day to follow. We did some algorithm exercises which reminded very much of my time in uni, except that this time things were so much more interactive and people seemed to be a lot more interested. The instructor made a few group activities that were organized within our Zoom call. We used Replit to make sure we were able to collaborate on code, and I have to give it to her. She was extremely good at explaining topics and explaining the principles of algorithms. Coding Dojo is also part of Colorado's Technical University. They overall have a well-rounded curriculum where you will learn Python, JavaScript, Java, 
.net, and much more. You'll have access to a bunch of resources, teachers, interactive activities, an online platform, all depending on what type of program you pick. Whether you decide to go into software development, data science, or cybersecurity, for you new MacBook users, I invite you to check their coding bootcamps and learn to code in a matter of weeks. I'll leave some links down below. Now for the True Air users, before recommending the M1 Air over the M2 Air, I do have to mention that I love how well the chassis has been aging. Just avoid overall getting the midnight blue. But other than that, the new design is very appealing. Yes, I'm still complaining about the fact that the coat on the midnight blue shows the imperfections of my physical use, especially towards the USB-C ports. However, the larger trackpad, the newer screen, the addition of the MagSafe and the new design language makes up for a lot. I do enjoy having a slightly brighter and around 25% larger screen. It also sort of feels like a MacBook Pro simply because of its slim down profile. It has the same curves, pronounced feet, and even the flat top. Compared to the M1, it is 20 millimeters thinner than the thickest part of the old Air. I do miss the tapered edges on the M1 though. I really thought that having that slight incline for a better keyboard experience was cooler, but I came to accept that giving that up was better for weight reduction and to slim things down. It just made going around the house with this thing even easier. Even though this is like as thick as my iPhone, I don't particularly feel like I need to be so careful with it. I always feel confident and I've been throwing this under my bed, my coffee table, leaving it in the kitchen, in my car trunk when going places and whatnot. And look, after six months, it's aged well. I don't have any sort of weird scratches or dents and so I am super happy with the way it's been looking. Here are some comments I do feel like I should mention. Compared to the M1, I do like this keyboard better. I enjoy the clickiness of this keyboard and the touchpad as well. Speakers haven't been that much of a wow factor for me. They are better than the M1 Air, but it's not why I would get one over the other. I do find the weight distribution to be better on the M2. If you are a student and you per se open laptops one-handed often, it feels easier doing it on this chassis. Yo, as I was about to film the PPI part of this video, look at what I found. Like, this is, am I like the only one not knowing that? Like, look at this. Controlling my M2 MacBook Air with my M1 MacBook. Wait, what? Isn't this crazy? This is pretty sick. I didn't know that. So let me know in the comment down below if you guys knew about it. My only take, and this is very much a personal opinion, I do like the higher PPI the M1 screen delivers. My eyes might be fooling me, but over time I sort of came to realize that for me, the M1 screen looks slightly crisper. However, 500 nits has been better than 400 nits, and not only that, but having MagSafe and two USB-C ports available at all times has been a game changer for me. Look, after all the good I've said about this laptop, I still don't think the impact of the new M2 Air has been as good as the M1 Air. The M1 Air, in my opinion, is the king of laptops and still is till this day, especially if you get yourself a refurbished model. Yes, it doesn't have all the new gimmicks and two USB-C ports can be annoying, but at the end of the day, the performance is a bit of a miss and not that much worth it compared to the M1 Air more specifically when comparing both base models. If you want a good return on your investment, get the M1 Air, and if you need the power, get the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Remember the M1 Air has a faster SSD of the bat, so no need to get the 512 gigabyte model. Overall, an M1 model is going to have similar performance due to the SSD and the M2 bottlenecking the system in some tasks. Look, if you are a true MacBook Air user with lots of productivity tasks to be accomplished, eight gigabytes of RAM is enough even for most Excel use out there. So who's the M2 Air for then? Well, personally, I think it's for people with money that maybe come from a Windows laptop or even an older Intel MacBook Air model. Look, the M2 Air is like the latest and greatest, but not the best bang for your buck. It really didn't have that great of an impact compared to when the M1 Air was released. And after six months of using this, I very much solidified that statement. If you aren't convinced and you still think the M2 Air is worth it, do yourselves a favor and check out Apple's refurbished program, or even better, check out some third-party stores that seem to be selling these at discounted prices. Just find ways to save money. 
If you are an M2 owner, I'd appreciate if you can leave your ownership experience down below. My job is to share my experience with tech based on my lifestyle, but I can't possibly cover all aspects of life with them. So I think a lot of us would appreciate reading your ownership experience in the comment section. Let me know with a hashtag M2 if you made it all the way through the video. I am happy to announce that we've got a day in the life video coming out next week. Stay tuned for that. I'm super excited to film that. I will see you all next week. Talk soon and take care.